So first, let's talk about how to use parameters to build your report. So what is a parameter? Parameters determine how we get the data for our report. Uh, parameters are what you use to set values for a report. Parameters get passed in when a report is executed. You can make a data source dynamic and customize your reports by adding parameters. And they allow you to define where you want to get data from. All parameters have these basic properties, a parameter name, a parameter type, such as date, string, double, boolean, data set, uh, and a default value. There are two different forms of parameters or two different ways to use them. There are data parameters, which are values that can be shown on a report, um, but the more commonly used form are filter parameters, which we use to go retrieve data. An example of a data parameter is one that's linked to the current value of a tag, like uh, maybe tag slash time. Uh, and an uh, example of a filter parameter is something like the start date and end date for a query. Parameters are important because they let you build a report in one place so that you can use it over and over again. It can reference different things, but it's defined in just one place. If you create a report without parameters, it'll just fetch data and you'll be stuck with whatever it gives you. And back in April, we did a Design Like a Pro webinar about templates. In that webinar, Travis talked about the template parameters and the same ideas apply here. You design it once and then use it over and over. As a quick example, let's say you have four different machines and you need a data report for each machine. If you don't use parameters, you'll have to create four different reports of the exact same data and hard code which machine you want to get information from. But with parameters, you can create just one report that you can get any of the data from the four machines. So now I'll show you some examples of the parameters we've talked about using the Ignition software. So I'm gonna bring up my designer here. And you can see that I have in my designer a window with a tag history report on it. And if I select the tag history report, and I come down to the very bottom of the property editor, you can see that we have these three report parameters already configured on it. We have a start date and an end date, and we have a title. For those of you that are familiar with Ignition, you can see that the start date and the end date are already bound to something. And in fact, they're bound to this date range selector down at the bottom. So if I go and move my date range to a different uh, day or a different uh, size of time, then it'll adjust the uh, tag history accordingly. Alternatively, we have this title here, and the title is just uh, a value that's directly put into the report. And like I was talking about default values here, the default for the title is this tag history report. But if I change it to something like my report, then you can see the title up at the top is modified. And these are in the designer, but of course you could add additional components onto your screen to allow operators uh, to modify these on the fly. If we go down in the project browser here to the reports section, we have our tag history report here. So if I hit my preview tab, you can see it's the same one. But if I go back to the data tab here, you can see here where our parameters are defined. We have our start date, our end date, and our title. And for each of these, we have some default value, like I was saying before, tag history report for the title. And you can set your start date and end date to something like the last five minutes or the last three hours or um, go fetch data from the database or whatever you want to do with it. Uh, but once you get to your window, then you can uh, put bindings on any of these things.